Welcome back. Next, we'll look at using PEACH, and PEACH stands for parallel each, and it works in this very same way as each. The only difference being when you have secondary threads available to you, it will make use of them by distributing the computation across multiple threads. Um, so in our notebook here, and the, the environment we've set up, if we run backslash S, it will return our number of secondary threads. So we have it set to zero, um, but if you wanted to set it up with more than one threads, you could basically use the command line option like so. So it's lowercase s. So um, if you want to read some more about that over here on our system commands, um, we can click on this one here, the lowercase s, and see how that works in some more detail. Um, okay. So in this example, we've set this process up with four secondary threads. And you'll see here in these expressions, the first one I'm using each, which is indicated by this here, each both, which we'll see in a, in a, in a little while. And then this here is the parallel version of that, um, known as peach. So you'll see this took almost three seconds and this took about one second. Um, <clears throat> So this is making use of parallel processing, basically. Um, there is a lot of information on parallel processing over on our documentation site. Um, it goes into this in a lot more detail about what it is and when you might use it. Um, we also have some really nice documentation on Qformortals in the book. Um, there's a specific appendix all about Peach um, as well. So it's definitely more on the advanced side and don't worry too much about it if it seems a bit over your head. Um, but it's worth being aware of, especially, say, if you're using a process that someone might, else might have set up for you. You can always run backslash S and check, do you have multiple threads running? And then you could test. And, and if you did, you might test out, OK, what do I get when I use each? And what do I get when I use the word peach? And see if you get a performance improvement. Um, so it's worth being aware of. Um, and then we have a note here that on a secondary thread, you can't update the main process. So you get a no update error, um, okay? But if you have zero secondary threads, each and peach will perform exactly the same. Okay, um, so the next one to take a look at is each both. So if you remember from our last video, when we tried to use each with a dyadic function, um, we weren't able to, and we had to adjust it by creating a projection, which allowed us to fix one of the parameters and then we were able to use each. Um, so we did have a second option available to us and that's this each boat iterator. So um, if you're getting confused when to use which, I think it helps me to remember each is for monadic or single um, argument functions. And then when you've got a function that takes two arguments, that's when you might either use each both or you might create a projection and then use that with each. So let's have a look at each both. So in this example here, I've got a list H, and if I run tree take H, it takes the first three elements of the list, so the first three words, basically, these three lists. Now, if I wanted to get the first three of each of those, so if I ran this and then my each both iterator, which is a single quote character, and I run that, you'll see what this has done. has it's taken three of each of the elements of H. So I've got three from T-H-E, Q-U-I, B-R-O, and then F-O-X. Okay. And take is a dyadic operator. So we're passing a three and we're also passing it the list H. And, and three is an atom. Now, if we wanted to pass a list here on the left-hand side, to take rather than a single atom, we could do that as well. And the thing to note, they must be of the same length. So if we have a length here, so if we count our H, um, it's four. So our list on the left-hand side must have four elements as well. So if we run this example here, um, you can just ignore the next two. This is just repeating it in three different ways. So the first one here, you'll see I'm getting one, so I'm getting one element from my first part of the list, which is there, which is why I get a T. Then I'm getting two from the second, three from the third, and four from the fourth. And you'll see here, remember we seen this before when we use take, the, the values will start duplicating themselves. So if we had something like 
10 in this third one or fourth one, you'll see Fox just keeps repeating itself. So remember that's a feature of take. It doesn't cap at the amount of characters in the initial list. It will just start repeating them and duplicating them. Okay, so that's what's known as pairwise nature. And, and that's what we're doing with this each both operator here. Um, we're showing the different variants of notation here. Um, this one here is the same as when we had in the last video. Remember we seen we had each and then we did average on H and you see we ran each on that list. So that's just our function notation. So in the same way we're putting our iterator at the front, then we're passing the function we want to run and then we're passing our two parameters here. And this is just another variety. Um, this was probably the most common, but again, that's the one I prefer and it's down to you, whichever one you like better. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're just showing here again, using each boat with the iterator here. So remember, um, we can use it this way with each boat. And we do also have the option to use the projection like we did in the last video. So um, you might want to use each boat, but if you didn't know this existed yet, we could have used what we learned in the last video that you can fix the first parameter basically and then you can pass your second parameter here um, with each okay and that's the same thing as having this here so you're just explicitly saying i've got two parameters here okay and it's important to know if you had a list that wasn't um, the same length or that isn't an atom. So say for example, we add a fifth element here, I'll get a length error again. So um, with each both, you must have um, your list of the same length or either one list and one atom that you're applying together. Okay. So if we remember our example at the end of the last video where we had this problem within so we were trying to run in like this and we got a funny parse error. It didn't like it. And what we did was we, we created a projection and we fixed the first parameter of that. So we did error and actually just go back up here and then we write it all. So we created this is three in, remember? And we did three in and then we applied that with each. So if I do redefine that and then we see we got this result. So we actually had a second option available to us and that's using each both. So we could simply have just said three in and then you pass the each both parameter there. And you see I get the same result back. And then we're showing here the left hand side doesn't have to be um, an atom. We could have passed three for each of them here and we get the same result. So hopefully that's not confusing. That's just saying you can say three in in all of them or pass three each for each of them. Um, now, again, the point being here, you can't have five. You'll get a length error. So you can have either option. Um, and we could do other values if we wished as well. So if we weren't looking for three in all of them, say we were looking for, you know, three in the first one, one in the second one, two in the third one and four in the fourth one, we could run this and we could get which ones are in which. So that can be really useful um, when we might be looking up different values um, in the list, for example. Okay, so we have a short exercise here. So we're asking you to join this list. So there's two lists. The first one is a list of characters. The second one is a list of longs. And then we've got a second list, a list of characters, and a list of longs. So we've got two lists of lists. And we want you to join them together so that you're numbers are together and letters are together. So the output has N1 FF joined with this here O and then this character list with the numbers then joined together as well. So you get one, two, three, four, five. And then after you have that, assign it to the variable called spaceship and then reverse those in order of each item of the list. Okay, so have a go at that and I'll see you in our next video.